One of the aspects of PixInsight is the ability to do multispatial image processing. This process is based on decomposing the image into a series of wavelet layers. You will see the layers term in many tools that you're likely to encounter using PixInsight. We saw a parameter regarding the number of layers to use in the HDR Multiscale Transform tool in a recent two-minute tutorial video. As you can see here with the tool, one of the top parameters and one of the most important parameters was the number of layers to use. You will also see them in the Multilinear Transform tool or the Multimedian Transform tool, as well as a smattering of other tools. But what does this really mean? We will talk about this and I will demonstrate a pretty cool little tool that you can use with your own images to give you a better feel for this. But first, let's look at the Multilinear Transform tool. We see layer numbers and a scale in pixels for each layer. In this particular case, we have 10 layers and a residual set up. And we can see that there is a layer number, 1 through 10, R for residual. And then there's a column in here which talks about the scale of the image. And the scale of the image is what size features are being captured in that particular layer. And we can see that we start with one pixel. And as we go through each layer, we're doubling the number of pixels or doubling the scale that we're dealing with. The image is decomposed or broken down into layers that represent changes in intensity across an image when looked at at a very specific scale. The most commonly used system of layers is deadic, where each layer is a doubling of the re resolution before it. You can see that we've chosen that here, and we can see the doubling that's going through. And as we get up to 10, layer 10, we're talking about an image scale of 512 pixels in size, where we started with just one pixel in size. So let's look at how this really plays out. On layer one, we're dealing with a scale of one pixel. So we're going to deal with brightness details that are seen at that scale. On layer two, we'll deal with the brightness details of a scale of two pixels. On layer three, we start to get a little bit larger. Now we're dealing with pixels are a detail level of four. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to be capturing brightness changes at a scale of three and four pixels. When we go up to eight, we're going to be capturing the detail variations on a scale that goes from five all the way up to eight and so on. And so for each of these layers, we're really trying to capture an image, which is the brightness variations when you're looking at it just from that particular scale. The residual image are all the changes in brightness that happen at scales that are larger than what you've already dealt with. So in this case, here we're talking about 512. We're dealing with something that goes uh, all the way from 512 on up. The residual image are all the changes in brightness that happen at scales that are larger than what you've already dealt with. So in this case, here we're talking about 512. We're dealing with something that goes uh, all the way from 512 on up. And the idea here is if you were to choose different layers, you would be focusing on different kinds of information in your image. Obviously, when you're dealing with scales of one, two, and maybe even four pixels, it's most likely that you're looking at noise in those particular areas. When you're looking in a region that's maybe more in the middle here, you're looking at a lot of the mid-scale uh, contrast and sharpness that you might have in the image. And when you get to very large scales, now you're talking about the macro changes in intensity and color across the image. This is not a hard concept to get, but making practical use of it on an image is another matter. Sometimes you need to see how all this works out, and we have a tool that can let you do just that. If you look under Scripts, Image Analysis, you'll find a tool called Extract Wavelet Layers. Let's open that up. This tool will point to an image you want to work with, and you can select how many layers you want to explore. In this case, since we've been talking about doing 10 layers, we're going to do just that. So we've gone up to 10 layers. We're going to check the Extract Residual Layer, and we're going to leave everything else as the default. Let's run it. All right, we have a bunch of images that were created by that tool. And since I'm recording this on my laptop, I don't have the normal real estate that I typically have. I'm going to close these down, and then we can look at each layer one at a time. Okay, so now we have all of our images open, and I've cleaned them up a little bit. And we'll use the image navigator down here to look uh, across them. 
The smallest scale layer we're going to see is called layer 00, zero which is kind of an unfortunate thing because every other tool in Pixinsight refers to the smallest scaled layer as uh, layer one, not layer zero, zero. So when you're using this tool to sort of calibrate things in your head a little bit, just add one to the layer name, and then you'll be using the same terminology that all other tools use. We're looking at layer zero, and we don't really see much of anything, maybe a little bit of speckles in here. This is a smallest scale, and so in order to see anything, we really have to zoom in a bit. But as we zoom in, we start to see some of the brightness transitions that are happening at the smallest scale, some of those are having to do with stars and the edges of stars, but you also see most of the noise in the image is really being seen there as well. Uh, we can now go up to the next scale. We'll go to layer one. And we're starting to see more detail. And if you look in here, you're starting to see just a little bit of the sharpness detail around the heart of the heart. So this is a pretty sharp image. And even at the next highest scale, we're starting to pick up some of that detail. Going to layer two, we're seeing more of that, and we'll step through this a little bit more quickly. Layer three, now we're starting to pick up some detail over in the side here. We're starting to pick up detail in here. Uh, as we get up in the scales, the brightness variations are more related to the details that we're concerned about in the image. Layer four, we're starting to see color come in. Five. Uh, you'll notice now things are starting to look less sharp. That's because we're looking at higher uh, scales. We're no longer looking at the finer scales, and it's the finer details which make things sharp. Layer six. Layer seven. Layer eight. Layer nine, which is our tenth layer. And at this point, you can really see we're, we're, we're at a very high scale and we're looking at really macro details. The overall brightness and overall color of the image starts to come through. And you'll see that even more as we look at the residual layer. Now at the residual layer, we're looking at the highest scale and it almost comes out to kind of an averaging effect. You really don't see an awful lot of information. Now let's take another look at those images to see how the detail evolves as we move through the different scaled wavelets. So this tool is uh, good for educating yourself on the kind of detail that shows up in the various layers at various scales. It can also allow you to decide what layers you may want to operate on. You know, if you're looking at doing noise reduction, you can get an idea for your image um, how you might want to manipulate the smallest detail layers. You know, how much is really noise and how much is important signal. And being able to understand that for your particular image may change your strategy when it comes to noise reduction. Looking at mid-scale errors, like maybe around five or six, lets you know where your details are falling in, and you may want to selectively enhance or sharpen details in those particular layers, and knowing what layers a particular feature falls in is really helpful, and this tool will help you to see that. As another example, I processed an image which ended up having a strange bubble pack pattern in the background. I was able to use this tool to determine which layers this pattern was prevalent in. Then I was able to use the multilinear transform tool to do an operation to suppress the detail on that particular layer, and it definitely improved my image. In a future video, I will share how you can do much of the same kinds of analysis we just did here using the multilinear transform tool. The benefit there is you can also manipulate each of the layers in place. Uh, or you can extract layers for other processing. 